these talking points, okay? And I'm recording this, so you know. Okay. okay. So you can swear all you want. Okay, <laughs> okay so um, affiliates. You signed up for dozens of affiliates. I got a million links. What does this mean? Give me a, the short version of this. Uh, well, no, if you sign up for uh, these affiliate sites like, uh, where are they here? Uh, Flex Offers or CJ Affiliates, they've got, uh, you know, millions of companies use that website to do their affiliate thing. So you can click, oh, I'll apply to be an affiliate for uh, booking.com. I'll apply for this car rental company. I'll apply for this credit card. So then, so I've been approved for like dozens of these, and so I I can make links for all of them. But then I've just stuck hundreds of links on my resources page, so it's not really a focused way to do it. Nobody's going to go to my website and randomly be clicking on all these different things. Buying a Ford, yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, he. I'm going to just buy a Ford through this this guy that's called Celebrity Josh. <laughs> yeah. Or the mother's going to say, oh, I'm just going to buy this baby carriage through Celebrity Jots because he knows so much about baby carriages. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's like, yeah, buy this baby carriage, take this uh, student vacation in Aruba, take this, uh, buy this diamond ring. Clear um, my credit score. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. I've got apps to check your credit. Um, what else? I mean, I could even go look at my page. I don't. Like so many of these things, I get approved, and then I've still got a folder called um, affiliate links to uh, to make links for. Like, because I, I make a custom link with my Celebrity Josh website, but I've got like dozens of these things that I haven't even made the link for because there's just too many. So I, I don't think any of that makes sense. You probably have to focus on things that your readers or people would care about. But the problem is I don't have a specific topic that I talk about, so I just thought, oh, I'll just throw everything out there. Yeah, uh, exactly. Have you ever walked into those stores where there's so much stuff you just have to look at you look and you walk right out? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Right. Um, yeah, and and how long does it take to, to create a, a customized link and to sign that up and to do all that? Like, it's got to take at least 15 minutes to a half an hour per link, right? Yeah, I mean, you, you have to apply and then sometimes tell them uh, what your website's about and then... And then it just, it's not immediate, so then they, they think about it for a week, and then you get approved, and then I get emailed, so I've got to go back into the site, and then I've got to find their links, and then make a custom link out of that, and then post it on my website, or whatever I'm planning to do with it. Um, so it just, yeah, it takes a long time, and that's why I've got a backlog of all these companies that I haven't even made links for yet. Yeah, um, because you've never really made any money from any of those links anyway, have you? No. Nothing. And I mean, I see, I mean, it looks like there's ways to do it. Like there's a dentist one uh, where people get like a $50 gift card if they book a dentist through your link. And then, so a lot of people, it looks like they get their affiliate link because you get $50 if they sign up or something like that. Um, and then, so people buy Facebook ads saying, hey, I got my gift card for going to the dentist. So I imagine some people must be making money from this. I mean, but... I don't know. I mean, I guess if it was that easy, I would do it myself. I don't know. And then a lot of people, there's like a bank that gives you $50 and gives them $50 if they sign up for a bank account with the link. So a lot of people seem to oh, be Oh, yeah. My brother tried to do that. That was uh, pretty hilarious. Your, um, who did? Yeah. Yeah. My other brother, Daryl. Um, uh, yeah. <laughs> He yeah. tried to do that, and then I had other people come up to me, you know, because that was a big phase at one point, and I didn't know anybody that actually got that fifty dollars ever because it looks but like if you, if you google the bank then people have bought google at or i get yeah they make their own websites with just the code on there so if you're googling yeah. like bank code you'll find it and i figured oh my god these people must be making so much money uh, i don't know but if you even got a thousand people that you no know, that would be fifty thousand dollars supposedly but i don't know if it's working for anyone yeah uh, yeah i know i know exactly i think it well, again, 1% might close, so you would have to get um, how many, like, um, th you need about 3,000 people a day and 1%. It's just, it's just not even, it, people can't get that, those kind of numbers 
on their their website platform right. to actually have that conversion of one percent. Um, you'll notice that people from you know the internet gurus, um, self-proclaimed internet gurus, I call them, um, but they do know that one percent of your traffic will buy. So you just work that back. How many people? Um, yeah, yeah. I would just get two people to my website, and one percent would be how many people? No. <laughs> Um, yeah, I, so it, I guess if you got a million people, one yeah. percent would be two ten thousand or something. Or... Yeah, a million, and you can't get a million people to your website, so back it up, back it up. Yeah. People get maybe like good people get maybe a hundred a day, yeah. maybe, you know. Um, I don't know. Yeah. So that, that's that's a losing proposition. I know that based on the one percent sales, stocks. Tell me about stocks. Oh, well, I mean, that's, uh, um, you know, just uh, over the years, I've just I signed up for a brokerage account and I've tried buying stocks. Um, a friend showed me years ago how to open an account. And then I'm like, oh, I should inst I should sell the mutual funds I bought as a kid and I should be trading stocks myself. But I've just had sort of a, a negative 70 percent return over the years. And then uh, <laughs> I've lost a lot of money on Bitcoin, that's for sure. Ah, Bitcoin, yeah. That a lot of money on Bitcoin. It's just again, it's hype. And if you're not at the top of the the pyramid taking people's money, then you're not going to be making that much money. That's what I, that's my take on this. Well, that must be it because I mean, even these and and I've lucked out a couple of times where I've turned seventy thousand into a million, but I didn't sell and it went back down. I'm like, oh my god, I should have held on to that million for sure. Um, but even all these gurus like Timothy Sykes or these people who claim, like he, his thing is that he made, turned twelve thousand dollars into, uh, like his twelve thousand dollar bar mitzvah money. He turned into five million dollars, but he's still spending all his time teaching these courses. And you go to his site and you sign up for his class for one hundred ninety seven dollars. So I mean, if he had so much money from trading, why is he still spending all his time teaching it? I mean, I guess it's another way to make guaranteed income. But, but uh, I mean, obviously, yeah. I mean, it seems like the thing to do is to sell the classes. That's what everyone's. Yeah. What is he doing? Well, that's the thing. They've got a good story. I mean, you know, people that, that like I, I made a bunch of money. I made a couple million dollars from the sale. Um, but I reinvested that into the website platform for people. So, right. um, you know, and, and how much does a house call, cost if they buy a house? All of a sudden they're finding that they're going to need to, you know, still generate revenue if they want to now keep their lifestyle the way they've just escalated their lifestyle. Unfortunately, a lot of these gurus um, can't reproduce how they made money if they made it outside of, um, you know, selling things to people, it seems. You know, I think they, they made their great, great money, but they can't reproduce, you know, whatever they did to make their great money. Like he can't take, I can't see him taking $12,000 again and making $5 million. Yeah, I guess because if he could do that, he would just do it again. Do that, yeah. Yeah. So what? So now he's teaching how to do that, and you're just kind of scratching your head, saying, "What?" <laughs> you know. Yeah, and that's the problem. And I think a lot of, I mean, even when I made my seventy thousand into a million, I lucked out with two trades. I bought some stock at fifty cents. It went up to two dollars, and then I had to sell that because I was uh, overdrawn. And then I bought another stock at twenty-seven cents. Then went up to ninety-seven cents briefly. But now I realize how hard that is to do. I, I was very lucky, but more, normally if you take a lot of money and you put it into stock, the stock will drop. So I, I don't even know if there's a lesson in there. It's, I mean, it's kind of like I lucked out and I didn't realize how rare that was. So, and it yeah, might but at be least, the same for him. Yeah, and at least you're not saying, okay, well, look, it, I'm going to create a course and tell you how to take, you know, 70 yeah. cents and make it millions of dollars yeah. um, and just buy my course and... You know, I mean, your book would be, well, you'll, you can luck out on anything, you know? Yeah, maybe, um, maybe that's what it'll be. <laughs> you can luck out on anything. That's my book. Yeah. So that's that's where I see a lot of the irony. Um, they, they, they have a one, one thing that they lucked out on, and it's like a million to one shot. And all of a sudden, they're just like, holy cow, you know, I can now create another totally separate revenue stream and promote that on how to make money, but it would never happen. It never would really happen to anybody. In fact, even the thing I'm promoting right now, I can't make millions on other right. than taking your money. And that's, that's, 
you know, now we're trying to get, you know, now we're seeing, you know, through the fog and through the smoke a little bit because that was a really good exposure. Um, you, you said on websites, I built a WordPress website for my blog. I have a lot of tech problems with it and it doesn't make money. Yeah, well, WordPress um, doesn't have any revenues strategies you'll notice that a lot of the website platforms they say you know make a statement on the web you know get your presence on the web but you you can make a statement you can get a presence but so what it's all based on revenue and here's what i find most people create their website they take forever to create the website and then promotion is kind of not there but then everybody keeps on getting brainwashed saying, well, you know, just use Facebook to promote your website. So now you're promoting everything on Facebook. You're directing all your traffic to Facebook. Facebook is making a ton of money and your website is still not making any money. So all these big, you know, social media platforms like YouTube, you know, put your stuff on YouTube. YouTube's making money from it. You're still trying to get people to your website, and when you get people to your website, like with WordPress or Wix or GoDaddy, you don't have any revenue streams anyway, other than your random affiliate links, which again goes back to the one percent rule. You know, right. so it's it's a bit of a lost leader there. But we'll come back to the websites because at least with the Income Activator website, you you start you you start saying okay. This is my revenue stream. You have to establish a revenue stream. If you don't establish a revenue stream with Income Activator, there's no point in getting the website platform because it's all about focusing on revenue. And it gives you, you know, substantial revenue streams, but you once you decide on a revenue stream, that's where you turn the table and say, okay, all my marketing is going to that revenue stream and I'm turning it on and if it doesn't work i will know in a very short while if you know if it's working and if it's working then it's a numbers game then it's just a numbers game when i um sent leads to insurance companies um i started through a touch tone telephone service and i was making about three thousand dollars a month you know they're going through the 900 number i was the actually the only legitimate 900 number person Okay. In um, in North America, like not selling weird stuff. Yeah. And at that time, I was making about three thousand dollars a month from you know people punching in their car insurance information on nine hundred numbers. And wow. then when I started my website, um, the first month I made three hundred dollars. And I thought, you know what? I w I did a lot of work doing this nine hundred number. The website platform sending leads I did no work I could live off three hundred dollars if I'm not doing any work yeah. so I shut all my real business my like touch tone telephone business down and then I just focused on promoting you know the insurance hotline because I knew now it's just a numbers game and it's a it's a numbers game that converted at 40 percent so um, so that so I knew my numbers and I knew what I had to do and I knew the conversion and I knew the revenue stream and that's that's how I focused on things. So um, let's go on to promoting web hosting companies. Where were you talking about that? Uh, that was just because um, like when you, if you have like a regular WordPress.com site that's like the free site, you can't you can't put ads on it. So I'm like, okay, I gotta have a self-hosted website. Um, using the WordPress language, uh, but you got to pay for a web host to have it hosted online. And I thought, well, I don't want to pay whatever it is, 10, 20 bucks a month. Um, I should, cause I'm a famous celebrity. I do social media. I should <laughs> find one of these companies that'll, uh, sponsor me with hosting. So, uh, I think I got SiteGround to pay for it for a while, for a year. And then I switched over to, cause a, a friend of mine was working at a place called Host Papa. Um, so, uh, I, I got them to say they'd they'd sponsor me. It basically give me free hosting. Um, so you know it's not worth a lot. It's worth maybe hundred bucks a year. Um, yeah. and, and it's on the condition that okay, you'll you'll put your you'll put ads for Host Papa on your site. You'll tell people to use Host Papa. You'll mention it in your YouTube videos. Um, 
and I guess maybe I, you know, because I don't have a regular YouTube show or anything right now, I haven't really converted anything. And I, it, people probably aren't clicking on my website. Go, oh, I'll get. I need web hosting services. Like it's such a, a specialized thing to order web hosting that. Um, I, I don't even know if I know anyone who's looking for that. So it's not like I've got a fan base of, of that kind of thing. And so it's a lot of pressure for me to be like, oh, you know, every year they say, okay, it's expired. I'm like, can you give me one more year? I'm really going to ramp things up this year. Um, and, and then I got to put the ads on and, and uh, it's just, yeah, it's kind of stressful. It'd almost be better just to pay for hosting, I guess, because I don't know how to get anybody to to sign up. Like it would be good money if people did. I think I'd get like, I don't know what, 50 bucks or something, or maybe 100 actually, or 200 if somebody signed up for a year or three years of hosting or something. But mm -hmm. uh, but I don't even know personally who those people would be that, that are looking for hosting and have no idea who to use, and they're going to click my link and use it. I mean, uh, especially since I'm not really making money from my own website, or my own website is just kind of a blog where I occasionally post articles that I was in or something. Um, so yeah, it's, it's hard. Like Everybody I know who's like wanting to make money online or whatever, like... I don't think they even look into, they're not looking for a web host at that point. They're wondering who, who will build them a website or maybe they'll use Wix or something like that. Yeah, um, Wix is for kids, by the way. Yeah. It started off as a kid's website for school children ah. so that um, it would not be found online. <laughs> ah. Yeah, because the SEO sucks. So, right. But it's a really easy website to put together. So you have a pretty little website you know, that you might as well hang on your bathroom wall. Because it's again pretty, but it doesn't make you any money. Let's go to Amazon affiliate. What's your experience there? Um, I mean, they, people say that's a it's a good thing to do. Like you'd be partnering with the biggest company in the world, and mm -hmm. and uh, if you if you're going to be an affiliate, it's good to be with um, Amazon because everybody, most people already have their credit cards with them. They they trust the company, and that's the problem with. A lot of my other affiliates, it's like, who is this jewelry store? Who is this car rental place? Like, <laughs> are they going to click on it and sign up and all of that? But Amazon, at least people buy stuff on Amazon. And if you can even get them to click on your link and then they're buying something else, at least you're getting a little piece of something. Um, so it took me, yeah, so I guess every now and then I would, I would apply and I'd get uh, accepted to be an Amazon uh, affiliate. But then after three months, if you haven't had made three sales, then it, they just take it down. So that happened a few times. It would, I would just have the site go down and I'd have to reapply. And then finally I sort of decided, okay, I got to make some sales here. Let me find some people who are going to buy some stuff or let me promote it on my page. So I got my three sales, but uh, now I just got another email saying, Hey, nobody's visiting your page. Uh, we're going to take it down. So you do need to have enough traffic. Um, so sometimes I'll do things like if I see people looking for things, I'll, I'll make an affiliate link for them or, uh, or, or I'll, I'll, I'll try to find specific groups to post about things. But it is, it's a lot of work. And I think I finally got some money from them after like two or three years, like maybe $100. Like it's, you know, so again, it's not really worth all the time I put into it. And then in addition to Amazon Affiliate, I became, I got approved to be an Amazon influencer, which means I get my own page uh, with a custom name, Celebrity Josh. Mm -hmm. uh, and I'm, I can post my own product recommendations on there, uh, including the, the t-shirt I designed. Um, but yeah, again, are people going to my page and going, oh, he likes this book or he likes this uh, chair or whatever? I don't know. It's, yeah. <laughs> it's hard to, to, to figure that out. And then I got approved as an Amazon merch person so that I could submit logos uh, or my logo or design for t-shirts. So now I've got my t-shirts on there, but it's, you can't, it's not available in Canada. You can only sell these things in the US and uh, and yeah nobody's bought my shirt through there either so so I'm a member of three different Amazon selling things but still uh, no sales really no and I'm sure some people do make money from these kinds of things I guess if you're a big youtuber and you tell people hey check this out you could get enough of a a thing but it yeah it I don't I don't know what the secret I again it's one of these other things that okay I've done it and oh look I made a penny or something like it's very exciting if I check my list and I see I got a few clicks or I made a dollar but so it's psychologically satisfying but it's like the same like going to a casino oh look I, I won two dollars but it doesn't really it doesn't even cover the, the bus fare to get there or whatever yeah yeah um let's look let's talk about instagram because that's uh people thinking instagram is the next holy grail so let's yeah, talk about yeah that. um yeah my, my family keeps my oh, yeah 
my, my family keeps saying, oh, why do you spend all your time posting in your Instagram story all day, telling everybody what you did, what you ate for lunch? And I'm like, well, I'm going to build a brand. I'm going to build my followers. And But there isn't really a way. I mean, unless, I don't know, unless you're somebody huge like uh, whoever the Kardashian is that it has a billion followers and she's got her own store and then people see her stuff. Like if you have something to sell, I guess you could use it. Although for most people, unless you have enough followers or your or something, you can't even put shopping links on your site. So that you only put one link on Instagram and I guess that goes somewhere. Um, mm-hmm. So I don't know, a lot of these influencers will put a code saying get 15% off at this clothing store with my thing, with my promotion code. And maybe people do that. I mean, it's a way of trying to monetize it. But, you know, I've been on there for years. I finally got like 4,300 followers, but... I, mean, I, so, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't even know how to make money on there, so I certainly haven't. I just keep hoping that, oh, it, I mean, maybe, the, I guess if you get to the point where you have 10,000 or 100,000 or a million followers, maybe sponsors will contact you and, you'll, and they'll say, hey, can you put a picture of our product and we'll give you 500 bucks? Or like somebody like a Kardashian probably gets paid like 10,000 or a million or who knows what to post something. But for a regular person like me, I don't know. Yeah, and you can't really just, you can't link somebody to, you can't put affiliate links up there. So that kind of yeah. sucks. Yeah, so I don't, know, I don't even so know. I don't even know. So what, weird. Yeah. So weird. Um, YouTube monetization. Um, uh, for a few years I monetized on YouTube, but only made $10 a month. Um, talk to me about this because, they, you know, I keep running into people that are saying, oh, yeah, well, we can put ads on YouTube. And I, and I say, you know what? You, YouTube will let some. Um, channels put ads on but you first need to be approved and then they can demonetize you just in an instant and the other thing that they do which is completely in my mind evil is that they can delete your subscribers not email your subscribers when your next YouTube um, video comes up yeah, Philip DeFranco, he's a big YouTuber that I, I watch a lot, does a daily news show. He talks a lot about that. Like, If he says anything controversial, the video gets demonetized. Or, um, or yeah, a lot of times he's like, oh, it looks like uh, the alerts are off or you guys didn't get the notice about that video. So if you could click to see yesterday's show, please do that. So even he's having trouble and he's having trouble and he's, he's one of the top YouTubers. Um, and even, even these big channels that talk about how to make money on YouTube, they admit that YouTube ads are a very small part of their income. Like it's it's not bad. They'll make a few hundred bucks or something a month, but it's just sort of bonus money. And, and the only way they can really make money is to have their own products to sell. So they'll be like, you know, here's my book uh, about 10 things to do with your kids on the weekend, or uh, here's a t-shirt I'm selling. Like that's why even Phil yeah. DeFranco is always selling his own, he started his own company selling uh, like hair gel and, and products like that. Um, yeah. And, and uh, yeah, so and I, there was a guy uh, in Toronto that I met at a YouTube space event, and he he says he gets a few million views for his Star Wars videos that take him two months to make. And I was like, well, how much money are you making? And he's like, oh, maybe about like three thousand a month. It was something kind of that didn't sound bad, and it sounded like okay, you know, you spend a month making a video, three thousand bucks is kind of good. It's like a a regular job, mm-hmm. but but that's you know spending an entire month on a video and then really lucking out that you've got a few million views like it's so even millions yeah. of views is is sort of basic income it's not like oh you're a millionaire because you got a million views on your video yeah exactly could you imagine if you sent people a million people you know to yeah. a company and the company paid them a dollar per lead and then you're a millionaire and that's right. what we're gonna crank over pretty soon and focus on that um so let's go on to um, Google AdSense. Now, yeah, and th- I mean, that's all part of the same, I guess even your t- YouTube money goes into your Google AdSense account. Uh, but I think of it more like, okay, well, if I have Google ads on my blog uh, and people click on them or they, the ads come up automatically, I get a bit of money. But I don't, I think maybe I've, g- I don't even know if I've hit the $100 threshold in the past 15 years. I think, you know, I think I know. I have over a thousand pages, and I may get a hundred or two hundred dollars a year from from Google Ads. Um, Google Ads is really crazy. Be, when it started, yes, you could make a lot of money, but that's when they launched. Now the they don't they don't 
convert. Their ads do not convert. I've been testing them over 20 years. They don't convert for the advertiser. So the advertisers have been leaving in, in like crazy with Google ads. Um, so it's a an, an really interesting opportunity here because, um, you know, when someone clicks on an ad, the advertiser does not have any way of following up on that person who clicked. Where um, when I was doing the lead program, I would send the, my advertiser, my brokers, um, the person's name, email, phone number, and exactly their request. And I never ever had, you know, any brokers quit on me. Um, when I sold the business to Tour Star, the Toronto Star, for, you know, I was doing five dollars per lead. Within the first year, we brought up to. Ten dollars per lead, and then we brought it up to forty dollars per lead. And again, no insurance broker went off it because the lead was incredibly qualified. When I was running Google Ads uh, to get, you know, people to Insurance Hotline, my website platform, and and I was running ads for on the newspaper and radio ads and TV ads. Every one of my Every one of my ad revenue budgets, I ended up doubling and tripling, except for my Google Google ads, because it never ever, even in the in the back days, could turn a profit. It was crazy. And then, when I started to test the Google ads, I would um, put a Google ad up and call a friend from you know another province or state and I said could you just click on this ad like right at this time and then I would go back to check the click and it would not be there wow. and then Google would say something like well you know what sometimes during some days we you know give you know free times and or we discount rates and it was impossible to I had done test over test over test proving that they were not tracking the leads they were not giving me what I deserved for putting their ad on my website that would kick someone off my website and pay me. So um, I know Google ads don't work in for advertisers and they don't work if you're promoting that product. Unfortunately, because uh, people are so brainwashed through and, you know, these companies like Facebook and YouTube and Google saying, oh, just put your content on our websites and make money through ads. They make money because you put your content on their websites and you get your people to look at your tribe to watch your videos or read your content. And they make money from your content by clicking on ad revenue that they don't ultimately share with you to any great degree so there you go that's my rant oh. uh-huh and it's you know after 20 years of doing this i know exactly what the game is uh, model models subscription pages can you explain what that is uh yeah can i just uh take a quick break my mom my mom's just leaving and i want to say goodbye to her can i call you back in a couple of minutes um can oh, no. we pick this what, up what, sorry this might what's that She's gone. Okay. Sorry. Yeah, go ahead. Okay. Let's just continue on. Okay. Good. Okay. It's just that I'm trying to make a, a four o'clock appointment. Oh, okay. Um, okay. So model subscription pages. Yes. Um, yeah. Like there's, there's pages where, uh, you know, people can have like a, a, a page, like a fan page where people subscribe to be able to, to message them or see photos that they're not posting online. And then I found a site that, uh, that'll they'll pay you a cut of it if, if you get the models to sign up through your link. And so I was talking to some Instagram influencers that said, hey, do you want to make money from your, your, your pages and stuff? And then, um, yeah, so I've, I've tried doing that. And I got, I think, four models to sign up because um, it's, it's, it's a very complicated um, <laughs> the process to, to get approved for the site. And they've got to submit ID and all this stuff. And then, yeah, I've made no money from that. I think one of the models made she had a few subscribers and made some money, but I don't think I've even hit the threshold that they would do a payout yet. So, um, interesting. Yeah, a lot, a lot of, of people. Yeah. I'm yeah, a lot of a lot of work for nothing. Yeah, and that's and that's the thing. I, I found that I have uh, put in hours and hours to get a specific company to, um, you know, that 
approve me for, and I would send them leads and, you know, just did not work. I was much better off just making a deal with somebody I knew, you know, <laughs> and, uh, and it, with a business that I was uh, recommending. Social media for small businesses. Explain what this is. This is interesting. Oh, I, well, I just, I thought, you know, maybe that would be a way of making money um, uh, to Ty Lopez is one of these gurus and he talks a lot about, you know, get businesses to, who don't have Instagram or don't have social media. Maybe they would pay you a thousand to 10,000 a month to do their social media for them. Uh, so he teaches a, a course about how to start a social media marketing agency and I thought, well, maybe I could, you know, I've done advertising over the years. I've mm -hmm. written ads for the biggest brands in the world. I could do that. Um, and, and so, yeah, I've randomly messaged companies just saying, hey, well, I guess, I mean, the problem is if I message somebody on Instagram, they've already got an Instagram. So whoever's running that isn't going to say, yeah, we want you to do it. Uh, so you'd have to contact companies that don't have social <laughs> media, I guess. Um, so, yeah, now, now I'm wondering who I even asked about it. I guess sometimes when I do interviews with, in a farmer's market or a St. Lawrence market or something, I'll be like, Hey, you know, I'll film a little thing for them. And I'll say, would you want me to do more videos for you? And they're like, yeah. And I think over the years I just forgot to follow up, especially if they don't have an email address and it's a phone number. I've got a call like a, some farm said, yeah, you could call my mom and ask about it. And <laughs> I don't know, it, it gets complicated because it is a lot of work if you're actually going to run the page and you've got to answer the messages from the public or you've got to do regular posts. Uh, like my plan still is like if I could get five clients to give me a thousand dollars a month, okay, now I'm making five thousand a month, and I could be posting for all their things. But it's it's not as easy to as it sounds to get people to say, okay, do my social media. I think a lot of people don't don't necessarily want it or care, and it's hard to justify yeah. why why they'd be paying for it. Like, why does a hotel need an Instagram page, or or how is the a restaurant going to benefit from having one, or and then is it Instagram, is it Twitter, is it Facebook? And eventually how much time does this take to do? Because I know it takes a lot of time for me just to manage my own. Like, could I be managing a restaurant? Or, and then how much money would it be worth? Do I want to spend all my days posting things? on? Well, anyways, it's, yeah, so it's, that's gone nowhere. I thought it would be a good idea, and maybe it still is. I'm just not sure. Uh, yeah, you're right. Because then now, now you're actually, you've got an online business, but you're not really working for yourself. You're working for five other companies on a platform which would probably like you said you know instagram they can't even get leads from that other than i guess general awareness yeah it's, so it's there yeah know? so it's hard to track it they'll just be like i don't know is this worth it we've got a hundred followers like not that many people want to follow a business anyways who's following the local pizza place to see what they say about pizza like it's they're not going to get that much from it and and you know, is anybody ever going to go buy a slice of pizza at this place because they found their Instagram? It probably doesn't make any sense anyways. Um, so yeah, yeah it's, it's hard to justify. And then I'm, and if it's not me in the videos, then it's not really advancing my brand at all. I'm just working for a few bucks to be promoting them. And if it does work, I'm not benefiting from all the traffic. I'm just getting whatever little money I'm getting. So I might as well just go be working at an ad agency again. Like it's... For other more than money, the, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So. Yeah, that's, you know, and, and that's really, really an interesting thing. Um, I remember someone uh, got an, uh, an income activator website platform for, from Botswana or something, like some weird, you know, area. And uh, she was saying that she wanted um, to put, you know, ads on, like affiliate ads. And she showed me this one website that, you know, had all kinds of ads from motorcycles to dogs to rocks to, like, everything, right? And I said to her, I said, you know, what, what's your background? What do you do? And um, she said, well, like, I'm a midwife. I'm a nurse. I help deliver babies. And I said, well, you know, you probably know a lot about babies and people need to know that information. Why don't you start a, a website on something you know and send yourself, you know, business? And, you know, other people that are in that industry business, so she set up... Um, so now she's working on a website. It's beautiful. It's um, it's a fertility website in three sections: how to get pregnant, what to do when you're pregnant, and after birth. Mm -hmm. And um, she's got this directory, and it's you know she's never even created a website before, but now she's got you know a really nice directory, sending leads to herself, which she wants, 
and to other businesses. Um, and as other businesses, you know, um, let's say there's a there's a nutrition company that's you know one of the businesses that she's sending leads to. What they're what they're doing is they're creating the page on their directory, and when when she gets that page done, she emails it to them and says, okay, so, you know, there's always money in your list. Why don't you just send this out to your list? And, you know, their list may be 10,000 people, which then um, she gets that audience to her website that she would have never gotten before. So that's how she's driving traffic. And it's it's quite nice. So um, where do we go off from there? I can't remember, but <laughs> let's... Let's go to the next point. Uh, video. The next point is videos for accountant. Oh yeah, so that there was an accountant I messaged. I think did, did I see his ad on Instagram maybe, and I, it was just like a post. And I said, hey, uh, you know, you could really use some videos for your Instagram. And he's like, yeah, actually, I was thinking of just that today. How I want some videos. So I met him at Starbucks, and mm -hmm. and I just filmed a ten minute chat with him about what he does. And he's like, what would you want? Uh, um, he's like, what would you charge for this? I'm like, I don't know, 250 a video? And he's like, all right. So I was like, oh, cool. So we did this four or five times, and he'd pay me 250 each time. Uh, and yeah, we, it was good. We'd just film a 10-minute a video. I'd post it on YouTube and help promote him, and, and it, it allowed him to, to have a fun chat rather than staring at the camera trying to figure out what to talk about. Uh, but then, yeah, he just went on vacation once. He's like, yeah, I'll call you when I get back. And then he just never did. And then uh, now I see he's... I mean, he's still sharing my stuff and liking my things on Instagram and stuff, but um, looks like he started his own YouTube channel where he just talks. So I guess he figured, hey, I can do this on my own. And uh, and who knows? Maybe he's not as funny without me or whatever. But but yeah, it just disappeared. So Nobody is. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Nobody's as funny as me. Um, <laughs> so, so yeah, I mean, it's. I guess that was a good business idea too, but it's not reliable. Well, I mean, it went away. It and, went away, yeah. And, yeah, and... Uh, so, and it wasn't millions, and it was, you know, it was a little bit of money. But I would have needed five or ten of those to have a, a real income. Mm hmm Exactly. And um, that's, yeah, I, I know what you mean. Um, it, that stuff goes away. Uh, videos for, um, what is it? Yeah, okay, so this guy, I can't remember how I met this other guy, maybe on LinkedIn, I think. And he's like, oh, you're an eco guy. You, I love how you do environmental stuff. And, and uh and he's like, maybe you could help me promote my furnace. So I was like, okay. So I went up and, and met with him and he showed me, he made this uh, really efficient furnace that he's invented and there's only one of them, and, but he wants to promote his company so that maybe he'll get bought out one day. Um, so I filmed a little interview with him in his garage with his furnace. And then I said, here, let's just make two more. So we had three little videos and then he's like, yeah, let me know when they're up or whatever. And I guess what I could have done is just uploaded them from my phone right away. But at mm -hmm. the time I was like, oh, I want to upload all my videos and chronological order so it took me maybe three weeks I was still going back and uploading old videos to eventually get to that one and so maybe a month later I finally email him and here's the link and he's like oh it took too long I can't work with you I I need to be I need to work with people who work quickly and you know and, and, uh, and I was like well that was just an anomaly I mean I could upload it immediately and a, a few times I text him I said, look here's the accountant interview I just did 10 minutes ago it's already up and but he just never responded again so so sometimes oh, with people's because yeah. we had never talked about what was the expectation, what was the deadline. We never talked about paying me. So he got free videos, and he did share them on his Facebook. But uh, and then he dished you, yeah. Yeah, so and I've emailed, all that work. Yeah, and I've texted him a few times saying, "Hey, do you want?" He's like, "Well, I'd be." I apologized. Actually, he never responded, and then I finally said, "Listen, maybe you're not responding because you're mad at me because it took a while." Like I was trying to figure out what is it. Yes, I'm very upset that it took so long. Uh, <laughs> but I'd be open to working with you again. You can email my assistant. And then I did, and she just, they've never gotten back to me again. So I guess sometimes with people, they just decide emotionally that it's over. It's like when you break up with a girl and then you're, oh, can I get her back? It's like, no, it's over. Mm -hmm. So I don't know what else he's doing or how he's promoting his thing, but I guess he just decided. And I don't know why he's so mad. I said, we, there was, we never talked about it. He never said, hey, when's the video going up? He just got mad. So I don't know yeah. what you, you can do with people like that. And it's, maybe there's nothing. Maybe people just... Have their own <laughs> emotions that you can't control. I don't know. I um I remember when I was sending leads to this one company. It was um I think it was called Vector. Um, I'll remember it. Anyway, um, they they said you know 
Lee, we, we'll pay you way more than $5 per lead. We'll pay you a percentage when we close people on insurance. And, you know, I did the numbers and I thought, oh, this sounds pretty good. I think I'm going to buy an island if we do that. And I sent him 5,000 leads. And, you know, my average in regard to from the brokers, they said they would close about 40% of the, these leads. So I'm like really stoked. And then they come back to me. It's a public company, right? And says, oh, we didn't close an, a single lead. Uh, really? Well, okay, then you obviously don't even want to be part of this program. I'm just going to take you off. And they said, no, 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 we want to stay on the program. So said, that's kind of weird. So I kept sending them leads. And then they said, we want to buy your company. And then they tried a hostile takeover. <laughs> you know, sure. from really? So you did close a lot and you guys are just crooks, you know? Right. Wow. So, so they yeah. were only pay, they, the, the agreement was they would only pay you based on what they closed. And they said they didn't close anything. But I guess, and, I mean, the trouble with something like that is, yeah, if they're crooks, they're just not going to tell you they closed. So how, how can you control or know anything? Like, Yeah, I know. I know. And that's, that's a lot that happens, you know, with affiliate programs. People say, oh, well, I, chart, I trust my affiliate partner. Don't necessarily unless you, can, unless you can test it and unless you can go in, unless you've got a good relationship with them. Don't. You know, right, that's honest, a good point. Because, because for example, for the, you know, for the web hosting, and they say, "Oh, we'll give you if we sell." Like, how would I ever know if somebody bought hosting through my link? Like, yeah. I mean, I, I assume, I guess, somehow it must be tracked or honest, but, but who knows? Yeah. Yeah. No. No. It's unless you, unless you've actually tested, and then gone in and you saw the testing and you could test it, and you have somebody doing it and you see it, you've got to be like a business partner with people that you uh, do affiliate programs with, like solid business partner, because you are going to get taken down the road. That's for darn sure on these, these link things. Um, okay. Interviewing on red carpet. Um, uh, okay. 50 yeah, bucks. Was, <laughs> yeah. I think that was just because a woman found, saw my, how did she find me? I think she saw one of my funny posts about trying to get uh, Priyanka Chopra to marry me at TIFF or something on Instagram. And she said, hey, I love your videos. And, and then I met with her and she was like, yeah, you should help with our website that she does an entertainment website. And then she said, hey, I've been asked to send someone to cover the Directors Guild Awards. Um, and so I went and interviewed people there. And I think, yeah, I think she gave me 50 bucks or something to, to go and do it. So that was kind of cool. I got to be in the red carpet. I got paid a little money. Um, and then what did she get mad about? I think it took me maybe two days to post the videos because I had to edit them or, and, get, and there was a lot of them and, and she got mad that it wasn't current. And then, oh, I think I was tagging Directors Guild in the post and she's like, stop tagging them, you're annoying them and it's already a week late. And I'm like, well, it's still topical. Like it doesn't have to be that day. And <laughs> I, don't, I don't know, we got in some kind of fight about that. And, and uh, yeah, I haven't talked to her since. And, and then, it, you know, again, it wasn't much money. He doesn't... Uh, yeah. So I it's mean, none of this is enough to live on. Like it's, it, and if it's so much trouble, I might as well just be not trying to make money. You might as just get a job and then just have a hobby that you enjoy doing. Not like, oh, I made five bucks or I made a dollar. Like I don't know. Yeah. No. And and you know, and that's the thing. If you don't have control over your own website, you're still basically getting people to pay you for a job, and then you, you still need to take the abuse of their, you know whatever situation they feel they've made up in their head. Right, know? that's the thing. That's, and that's what I keep telling myself. I don't want to be abused. I don't want to have to be beholden to these people who get mad at me for this arbitrary thing. And then I'm like taking all this crap for 50 bucks or not. Like, you know, I, yeah. I lost money on the furnace guy because I had to pay for the transit to get up there. And, and he's able to just abuse me and, and, <laughs> and, and, and gets the free videos. That's right. And, and and then this woman with the the entertainment website, she's making money from her site. She gets, I mean, somehow she's making money. She's got ads posted on there. People post casting ads, and and so my videos helped promote her site. Uh, it was obviously, yeah. and but then I just get abused again and and get nothing out of it. So <laughs> I might as well be posting on my own celebrity Josh site at least, and then then I can be driving people to my website, I guess. Yeah. Okay. Surveys. Surveys. What did you do? I fill out surveys. Oh yeah. Uh, email well, me. Ten. Yep. <laughs> yeah. I know a lot of people do this. They they're making money online by completing surveys and doing tasks, that type of thing. I have four dollars in my account after many months. <laughs> Tell me about this. 
Um, oh, right. Um, so, uh, I mean, there's a lot of these, I've got like folders of where all my emails are directed from these, you know, do a survey, get 10 air miles or, uh, a lot of, and then what, what, there's one that I just got today. Cause like a lot of them are, or this particular one is you have to do it within minutes. Where is it here? It's like, oh, here, uh, oh yeah. User crowd test available. And if I take the test, it takes me one minute to complete. It'll earn me 10 cents, but that came in an hour ago. So it's probably too late. Like if I click on it now, what does it say? I'm sure it'll say it's expired. Yeah, no available tests. Sorry, this test is no longer available. They're all... So yeah, so you have to do those. So no matter what you're doing, you have to stop everything. And you know, it's only a minute, but it distracts you from what you're doing. And then even if I had done it, it's 10 cents. So if I do yeah. one of these a day, that's yeah, $3 a month, $30 <laughs> a year for, and, and how much does that take? You know, it's even one minute is okay. Now I've spent, uh, you know, say, say it only takes a minute, uh, which, and it's interrupting you. So it takes longer to get back in your flow from whatever you're doing. But if it's 30 minutes a month, uh, that's six hours a year for thirty dollars. So what is and, that? Yeah. And the same with the the buns app. Yeah. So the buns, I think buns just went out of business, called something else. But it was it's like a an app and a, a Facebook group where people buy. Well, it's not buying. It's supposed to be trading things like, uh, uh, but but you know, like I'm trading old shoes and uh, or or whatever. People are getting rid of stuff, but it's not supposed to be selling. So. To get around that, people say, oh, well, I'll offer you bus tokens or beer. Like people come up with their own kind of currency. But then they invented their own um, cryptocurrency that you could use at a few coffee shops in town or you can use it on the app to buy people's old umbrellas or whatever they're selling. Um, and then daily, they have the daily BTZ. That's what their their cryptocurrency is called. And, they say, and so the, the daily drop is like they'll send you a quick survey and it'll say... Uh, you know, what's the reason you're afraid to get car insurance or whatever it is, and it's sponsored by car insurance. And you click your answer, and then it says, oh, you got five BTZ points, which, like, there's, you know, might be worth five or ten cents or something. So same kind of thing. Like, it takes you a little bit of time out of your day, and it's for five or ten cents. And I guess it's kind of fun to say, oh, I got a few cents, I got a few pennies. But, again, none of it is... No, no, that's not, that's not good. Um, you know, if you're not looking at your your daily revenue at at least a thousand dollars a day, you just it sucks. Yeah. Um, Facebook monetization. Tell me about this. What, talk to me about this. Uh, I upload vi videos directly to Facebook, hoping I'll get enough views that Facebook will start monetizing me, but they never do. No, Facebook doesn't monetize people. They steal their identity, they steal your information, and they sell it to the highest bidder. And in fact, um, you know, there's so many people suing Facebook right now and so many class action suits. And um, I was watching um, one thing, I think it was Ted Cruz was interviewing, or somebody was interviewing Facebook. They had brought them in uh, to the government to say, you know, this is this is really bad. And they and they said to, who's the guy at Facebook? Mark Zuckerberg. Mark Zuckerberg. And they said, so Mark, before we begin, do you mind if you tell me, you know, what you've been doing for the last month in regard to, you know, who have you talked to and where have you lived, all the hotels that you've been to and everything? And Mark says, uh, no. And the guy <laughs> says, well, <laughs> that's actually what we're going to talk to you about today. <laughs> Yeah. You've been doing that on everyone else. Right. Yeah, that's, that's yeah. That's, that's it, funny. Yeah, so, um, yeah. yeah so the, the, they do, I mean, like YouTube, I, they have some kind of program where if you get enough views on videos on your Facebook page, you can somehow get monetized, like to, for, to ads to be run in the middle of your videos, and then you get a bit of money, like, like if you have a monetized YouTube video. I don't know what the threshold is. I'm certainly not at it. I don't even know if they offer it in Canada. Uh, I just got an email from Facebook creators saying about monetization and it was all about, it said, go click on your settings on your video to see if it's, uh, and, and I don't know, nothing was available for monetization. I don't even know how the whole thing works. So I don't know, you know, if it's for people with millions of Facebook fans and if they post a video, how much they're making. It's again, it's all stuff that's not within my control at all. Like, I mean, I could try to become a huge celebrity and, and maybe I'd make money. I don't even know. I don't even know how much it would be. So, well, actually, uh, um, on that on that point, celebrity Josh, um, yeah. I, this is what I, I keep you know talking to people about is that you need to make that direct um, contact 
with uh, an, an advertiser that um, does that. So if you do a video, you do your own commercials within that video. And that advertiser, whether they pay you directly or that um, they sponsor you for X number of dollars a month, you know, and are part of your ad that you put in in your own video, that's, you know, that's actually how you could do it quite nicely. So if you do your own videos and let's say you had, you know, five sponsors all paying you a thousand dollars. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Just a second. No worries. Hi, I'm on the line right now. Can I call you back? Yes. Thank you very much. Bye bye. Bye bye. I have no idea who that was, huh. and and they're not getting called back because I didn't take any information. But that's anyway, funny. so um, yes, basically, yes. that's that's the route to go. You've got to connect with your own advertisers. You've got to get them an agreement based on certain things that you put up. You know, four videos you know a week and you give them this time slot and this is what the ad's going to do and this is just your flat fee for paying for it and then on your YouTube channel you can put a link to their company um, and that's you know that's a a very nice way so you're still promoting what you're doing at the core but you've got what you can consider sponsors and paid sponsors yeah that seems the only way to do it like that's why Philip DeFranco is promoting his own company in the middle or uh, and before he was promoting other companies, like he'd stop in the middle and go, hey, you know, sign up for this game of the day or whatever. He still has his own sponsors, and that's the main way. I mean, I guess, yeah, you got to build up big enough an audience that people would want to sponsor you and then and then have the sponsors or, or be doing stuff on a specific enough topic that even if you don't have that many viewers, the, the viewers are interested in this topic so a sponsor might be like oh it's people who like turtles well i've got a turtle store so that makes sense kind of thing rather than just oh it's a general interest show and and, Mm -hmm. uh, you just got to have millions and millions of fans yeah you got to target your sponsors they've got to be aligned to what you do that's the benefit when um point sponsored me for my tv show you know my tv show was on insurance tickets accidents in the law and points got people off their tickets so it was a good alignment so that the points didn't sell turtles you know what I mean they right. <laughs> so you got to be strategic in that um, job applications what is that about uh, we were just talking about ways to make money online and I mean online I'm always applying for jobs so I go into the LinkedIn jobs and uh, job postings on Facebook or indeed any of these job sites and I just sort of apply to radio host jobs or mm-hmm. occasionally copywriting jobs in the US or whatever but um, I guess I'm not applying for things I'm specifically qualified for so it doesn't really go <laughs> anywhere so uh, you know because I know I don't have radio experience and I also am not uh, legally able to work in the US so uh, so it's yeah it's a lot of time I spend applying for ads just it's like buying lottery tickets. Oh, maybe somebody's going to hire me somewhere or whatever, but I don't even know if I would take the job. So, yeah, it's just another way I waste my time on online. And like you were saying, time is money. So that's a way I'm losing money online as well. Yeah, like match.job. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Clothing apps. What's this about? Uh, a lot of people now make money by selling either their own old clothes or they go thrifting and they, they'll find clothes at vintage shops and then sell them online. Uh, Gary V talks a lot about this, like, um, well, he goes to garage sales and buys toys or vintage things and then flips them on eBay. Um, so some of the, some of the sites are directly for clothes. Like I think there's something called Poshmark and, mm-hmm. um, there's other ones that are only in the U S and they're not here yet. So I tried posting like, I don't know, an old sneakers I found on the street and, um, my old leather jackets. And I don't think I've sold anything yet. Cause a girl did want to buy my, some, a pair of old Converse I found, but, Mm-hmm. To, to mail a pair of shoes would have been like thirty dollars to send it to Vancouver, and she wanted to buy them for fifteen or something. Like so, even just the oh, that's the, frustrating. Yeah, the, the shipping costs of of having to to ship old clothes is expensive, and um, but I mean, there's I I follow some some women on Instagram that that's what they do. Like they they spend all their time finding old clothes, and then they take nice pictures of them on a nice background, and then they she uh, this woman sorts them in. Uh, clear plastic bins and labels them and then puts them in a nice package and makes sure the package is nice so that people give her a good review and 
I mean, maybe they make money. I don't know if she's making That's, millions. Yeah, she, you never become a multimillionaire that way, but you, no. you can follow your passion for sure. Yeah, if, if you enjoy it and that's what you like doing, you could spend all day doing that. So it's kind of the equivalent of a job, I guess. It's like, but I don't know if that's for me. Like, I don't care yeah. enough about selling old clothes that that's what I want to do all day. Yeah, I knew a girl exactly. uh, who was running a, a, a company in LA or a website about, uh, was it called Recycled Bride? It was about like eco friendly. Wedding dresses, people reusing them, and then she found a video I did about proposing to Lori David, who proves an inconvenient truth, and then she posted the video on her site. And I, I met her in LA a few years ago, and um, and then she got mad at me. I think I tweeted out that uh, she had mentioned she was out on a date. She's like, "I'm trying to get back with my other boyfriend, and you shouldn't be t tweeting about this." I was like, "What?" I, I didn't understand what was going on. <laughs> but then uh, I see in the news that she started another website called TradeZ that's now valued at a hundred million dollars or something. And she's got like this whole company with all these employees. I'm like, ah, oh, I should have been nicer to her or, or whatever. Um, yeah, but yeah, so, so the way she's making my, and trade sees one of these sites too, where people sell their used clothes. So she's got millions of dollars now because she started the website that does it, but not, I, I doubt anybody's making millions by selling their old clothes on, on the site. Yeah. That, that follows a very similar thing to what I was talking to you about, about, um, uh, the Income Activator website platform, you see what the, the strategy for these multi-million dollar companies is they invite or they take I, AI information, like for instance, Insurance Hotline took insurance information uh, from the insurance companies, displayed it on the website because people do two things. They look for information, which I've displayed, and then they look for recommendations and the money is in the recommendations where I told them where to go uh, to the insurance brokers who paid for a lead, not based on a sale, because I'm not depending, I'm not making anybody um, that's, you know, I'm not depending on anybody's ability to sell. That's for darn sure. Yeah. But they'll pay for lead. And, and, you know, Google, YouTube, Facebook, they don't depend on anybody, you know, ability to sell when they send leads. It's a lead. You pay for it, and even if it's crappy lead. Um, now, if you take, if you look at that model you just described with that girl, anyone can do that. Think of it this way: if you just stood up and said, "Okay, you know what? I want to be the biggest photography company in the world," and there's thousands, millions of photography companies online making no money at all, but then this one company says, "Yeah, I'm the biggest photography company in the world. I'm not even going to take any pictures." I'm just going to invite people to give me their pictures, and then when I see their pictures, I'm going to send an email saying, "Do you want us? Do you want me to send you back a lead?" Pinterest. That's Pinterest. Three hundred million dollars last year. Mm -hmm. um, then a company popped up and said, "You know, I'm going to be the biggest taxi company in the world. I don't have any taxis. <laughs> I don't have any cars, but I'm going to have people give me their cars." And I'm going to send them back leads. Hello, Uber, 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 Uber. Yeah. <laughs> um, same idea again. You know, I'm going to be the biggest hotel company in the world. I don't have any hotels, but I'm just going to invite people to give me their accommodations and I'm going to send them back leads. And then you've got your Airbnb. You see, when you pick a topic and then invite people to give you information, whether it's companies giving you information like uh, Priceline, you know, Priceline doesn't have hotels or airplanes or cars. It invites companies to give them their information so they can display it online and they send them back leads. So you can pick any topic in the world and invite people to contribute and ask them if they want leads back. And that's that's how all the company, big money companies do it. In reverse, um, people like yourself trying to make money online do two things wrong. You create content and you try to sell your junk or other people's junk. Google doesn't create content. Uber doesn't create content. YouTube, Pinterest, none of these big money companies create content and none of these big money companies try to sell their junk. Even Amazon, it's not their stuff, you know. People give them this, the product lines, you know, and then they say, hey, yeah, we're going to send other people there and if they buy it, great. But the number one thing is that if you establish a business 
that is something that people need on a daily or weekly, monthly basis or are interested on a daily, weekly or monthly business or, you know, basis, they will go to your website and then if you can send them back information and attach it to a revenue model, now you're talking. So we need to pick up this conversation again. Yeah, because yeah. it's, it's frustrating because I hear a lot about, um, I, what was I reading? Uh, Ty Lopez, somebody was talking about it recently, saying like, you know, don't, you know, your, your number one, your first business doesn't have to be the biggest one. Like even the guy who created Uber, that was his second business. He made millions doing something else first. And so a regular person, I mean, for me to go, oh, I'm going to start the next Uber or Facebook, it's not realistic. I'm not a computer programmer. Like it, it, it's tough. So yeah, um, I understand the, I guess the the logic behind it all, like the biggest hotel company doesn't own hotels, but it's it's tough for how does this apply to me as a regular person that doesn't have hundreds of millions of dollars to start a company or doesn't have uh, computer programming skills. And like if mm -hmm. it was all that easy, I guess everybody would be doing it. But, but well, yeah, it is, it is frustrating that to see people making money and I guess a lot of people make money and I'm smart, but I haven't well, figured it out. Yeah. Well, the other, the other thing is that you'll notice that WordPress, GoDaddy, Wix, they don't give people lead tracking software, which is where I made my, my money from. They don't give it to them. Right. Why don't they give them to them is the question. Because it would cut into the revenue streams of the big money companies. Right. So they just don't. They would rather feed you a little bit of a crappy website and siphon money from you saying, oh, you need this software, you need this software. Oh, you know, no one's buying from your online store. You must be doing something wrong. Let's go to this course. And that you guys like sheep do this. And then there's, they put millions and millions of dollars into the social media trying to convince you to give them your content so that, again, they can make money from leads. So what we're going to try to do is open the eyes of your audience up and talk about, you know, things that the big money companies do that are hiding in plain sight, but, you know, they've spent too much money brainwashing you and not showing you the path because every one of these things we've just talked about is basically getting you to work for people uh, for nominal money or for free. Mm -hmm. That's not how to become a multimillionaire. No. So, yes. <laughs> no, yes. <laughs> I'm confused now, too. Yeah. So, I've got another meeting to go to. I've got, I'm a little bit late. So, okay. I want to pick up this conversation tomorrow. Do you mind? Uh, no, let's do that. Okay. And um, I'll talk to you later, but I've got to get to this meeting. Okay? okay, have a good meeting. Okay, thanks. Okay, bye. bye.